Members, uh, I'm David Ahmed, and met David last October. We started a um, new energy dialogue, the U.S. has started a new energy dialogue with uh, Pakistan. First time in 10 years that we've had an energy dialogue with them. One of the interesting things that uh, cropped up in part of this dialogue was uh, David showed up and was very convincing that there was plenty of geothermal resources in Pakistan. So uh, without further ado, I'll give you some background on, on David, the founding member and chairman of the Energy Foundation of Pakistan. Uh, as I said, he's pursuing a campaign to use geothermal for uh, heating and cooling in buildings and for power generation in Pakistan. And uh, uh, Javed has been in the uh, oil and gas business for, for quite some time and drafted some of the original uh, uh, mining concession rules uh, back in the early 70s. So without further ado, uh, Mr. Javed Amin. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for your patience. I am going to give you a brief introduction of uh, geothermal source potential of Pakistan. I am the first scientist uh, who is working on geothermal potential in Pakistan. Uh, uh, this is a map showing the uh, Pakistan location with respect to other countries. This is energy mix. Yeah, you can see that uh, mostly we are using uh, fossil fuels in our country and uh, only 50% electricity is being produced uh, from hydropower. Yeah, this is our power generation capacity and uh, hydropower is about uh, 30%. Uh, thermal power is from public sector and private sector. It is about 60 percent. And the rest is about 5 percent from nuclear, wind, and solar. And our uh, private power producers, they produce about 40 percent of electricity in the country. We have 22 IDPs. We are mainly dependent on imported oil. And our total balance is more than 15 billion US dollars. And uh, the fuel consumption for geothermal, for, uh, geothermal generation is uh, more than 8 billion dollars. Which is a burden on our policy resources. And uh, our domestic uh, oil and gas resources only be about 20% requirement of the country. Now we have planned power projects. So 10 plants based on coal is, will be set up at Bloch Sunkerance. Then again, 10 plants in uh, a job branch. And 3 plants in Sint branch. The total will be 23 plants. And they will consume 60 million tons of coal annually. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> and it will value about 10 billion US dollars annually. And the government is also planning to set up 42,000 megawatt of nuclear power plants by 2050. Well, geothermal source potential is not known to the country because uh, nobody has ever cared to understand or evaluate its potential. As you can see, well, we have geothermal energy systems controlled by geodynamics, fold belts, tail boundaries, 
active forms. Then we have seismic suture related systems. Then we have hydrocarbon sedimentary basins building oil and gas. So the evidence of geothermal energy potential in Pakistan is the presence of hot water steams, sedimentaries, shearholes, geysers in northern Himalayan valleys. Well, there are more than 100 sites which we have evaluated as yet. But there could be more. Then there are mud volcanoes, hard geothermal fluids, and Blochistan province. Then there are dormant volcanoes which are giving magmatic waters with more than 150 degrees centigrade. Then hydrocarbon basin related co produced geothermal waters, the temperature is 100 degrees to 170 degrees centigrade in different basins. Then we have about 300 wells which have been abundant and uh, the temperature is 120 to 160 degree temperature. We are, they are the best candidates for the ABS technology. Then we have discovered some geothermal basins in Pakistan. Yeah, you can see this complex seismic tectonic setting of Pakistan. You can see earthquakes all over the country and electric seismic faults. So, which are source of geothermal energy in Pakistan. Yeah, this is an active tectonic setting, northern areas. The Indian plate is moving under the Eurasian plate. And on the western side, the Arabian plate is moving again under the Eurasian plate. So, they are causing uh, earthquakes and creating geothermal energy in Pakistan. So the Arabian, the Indian plate is moving at the rate of 4 centimeter per year. We have earthquakes uh, almost every day in the country. Maybe their intensity is very low. So these are the different geothermal energy sources in different regions of Pakistan. Well, the north is the Gilgit Baltistan province, the northern Himalayan valleys, which have uh, hot water springs, geysers, fumaroles, and the temperature is again at 120 degrees centigrade to more than 140 degrees centigrade. And the sites could be more than 100. Then in Azad Kashmir, that is also part of Himalayan valleys, we have few sites where we have the hot water springs and fume roads. Then in the KBG province, in the northern areas, we have few springs, hot water springs. But unfortunately, these springs are not being used, I mean, the hot water is not being used by anyone. Except few people, they use go for picnic and uh, boil their eggs and potatoes. <laughs> That's all. Then in Punjab province, we have the upper Indus sedimentary basin, and we have discovered a very large geothermal basin. It is associated with the uh, oil and gas production. The co-produced geothermal waters with oil and gas, they are producing about 100, 100 degree centigrade to 150 degree centigrade temperature. Then in the same province, we have geothermal stain in a different related, related to tectonics. And uh, in the lower Indus basin, which is the main uh, producing area for oil and gas in the country. We have one Badin Sangar Reef Basin, where the temperatures are under 130 degree down, centigrade. And 
and then upper same geothermal basin where the temperature is under 270 degrees centigrade. And there are hundreds of wells which are producing water, but they are being rejected or they are flowing in the dry streams or they are evaporated, burning natural gas. So in the Blochon province, we have the Chawi, Chawi volcanic or magmatic sources. There are dormant volcanoes which are producing hot waters. And there are some geothermal springs. And then along the coast, Mekran coastal area, we have mud volcanoes and springs. So, Merits, what are the merits for uh, development of uh, geothermal energy in Pakistan? Number one is the high electricity demand, power shutdowns 6 to 20 hours in different parts of Pakistan. No need for exploratory drilling. We have 300 wells available, which are very good candidate for geothermal development. Then the geothermal sites, hot water, steam springs, fumarol, diesels, dry wells, depleted cap, iron gas wells, to produce hot waters on 100 degrees centigrade to 150 degrees centigrade, available at dozens of sites. Land available at geothermal energy sites, infrastructure facilities, road, grid power, water available. No permitting issues in Pakistan. Government of Pakistan is ready to provide all facilities and investors for power plants. Geothermal sites mainly near populated areas and power grids. We have established oil and gas industry. And we are producing oil and gas in 1915 in Pakistan. Then multinational oil and gas companies like Shell, BHP, OMB, ENI, Cookpack, they are working in Pakistan. Multinational oil field service companies are present over there. Local funding available, I, mean, I think then we can provide uh, local equity financing for these projects. Skilled manpower and highly qualified engineers and geoscientists available. <coughs> Local mechanical, electrical, industrial, and HVAC technology providers available. 22 IPPs already working in Pakistan. Preliminary geothermal energy data available. Well, reduction in greenhouse gas emissions projects for CDM available. These are the map, uh, geothermal energy zone of Pakistan. You can see in the north, in the northern Himalayan region, where we have these fumaroles, geysers, and hot springs. Right. And in the upper Indus basin, there is a sedimentary basin, and uh, there is a port for geothermal basin, which is very close to our capital. And, uh, near main populated areas and uh, main industries where there is great demand for power. Then there is a middle in the sedimentary basin well, which is least explored, explored. But we have uh, drilled few wells and uh, the temperatures are 100 degree to 140 degree centigrade. Then the lower in the sedimentary basin it is mainly producing oil and gas in the country. It is the main source of oil and gas. And there are two basins, geothermal basin. One is a Bandi Sangar Rift Basin. The temperatures here are 100 degrees to 120 degrees and 130 degrees centigrade. In the upper sink basin, we have the temperature up to 170 degrees centigrade. All these temperatures are available in the and we have provided to them. Then, in the Balochistan area, we have the Pashim Basin, 
which is very close to Afghanistan, and uh, we have few mud volcanoes and geothermal sites over there. Then the Chagi volcanic area where we have the dormant volcanoes. Then the Macan sedimentary coast area. We have mud volcanoes and dozens of uh, geothermal springs. This is another uh, southern uh, lower end basin showing Badin Sangha Rift Basin and Upper Sin Geothermal Basin simple things. So you can see the number of wells drilled in the area. There are hundreds of wells drilled in the area. And uh, hundreds of wells are available for geothermal development. And uh, these are very close to Prachi, which is the largest city in Pakistan and the largest industrial base of Pakistan. This is a good for geothermal basin near our capital, Islamabad. So you can see the temperatures. They range from 100 degrees centigrade to 154 degrees centigrade. So we have a lot of uh, dry wells or depleted wells with high temperatures. And some wells have a artisan flow. The hot water is flowing with artisan flow. No need of uh, pumping water. Well, this is geothermal energy, direct use applications. Well, they are the same all over the world. But uh, there is a lot of scope in the northern areas, in the Himalayan valleys, where the people don't have uh, power. And uh, they are burning, they are cutting forests and burning trees for eating purposes and cooking. But they will use this uh, geothermal energy which is available in hot pot springs, fumaroles, and uh, there is poverty over there. People are unemployed. And if you can work this, you can provide them jobs, you can bring prosperity into the area. Then there's a lot of climate change effects due to this uh, forest cutting in the area. And that can be stopped by supplying them geothermal energy. So this, that's my conclusion. The preliminary exploration studies have indicated large potential for the development of geothermal energy sources in all the princes of Pakistan. For power generation, direct tubes, and installation of geothermal heat pumps. Well, we have sunshine all over the country. We have installed three heat pumps. And Nagy Foundation has installed three heat pumps for demonstration. Just to show the public where it works. <laughs> Our 90% uh, air mission plants are working on natural gas. They are burning natural gas to operate the chillers. And the deck for deck for emission grants. Then our recommendation: <coughs> we need a detailed survey of geothermal energy sources, maybe sponsored by international donors. And uh, we would like the three power plants. Using geothermal energy, we will set up in the three provinces which have the most the, most of the sources available. Then that huge geothermal energy products may be taken up in uh, Himalayan Valley and uh, KPP province. Co-produce hot water from iron gas fuel may be used on four-party basis for power generation, which may be a better option than coal-based power plants being planned by the government of Pakistan. I think we can replace that coal-based power plants by using, by developing our geothermal energy sources. Then outreach awareness campaign for students and general public may be started by educating the 
the people about the benefits of Java Widgets and Android. Uh, this is one of the guys and hard work on his team, team with more than 140 now they in Malayan areas. There are hundreds of sites like this in the northern areas. Yeah, this is another site. You can see how much energy is being wasted. Yeah. This is a dormant, dormant volcano. It is giving hot water more than 30 degrees centigrade. This is embedded in Brussels underwents. Oh, these are mud volcanoes and geothermal fluids in the Grand Coastal area in Brussels underwents. This is a message. Thank you very much for your patience.